All right, are you ready? Yes! We're gonna bake biscuits, so. Bake me and Dad. Yeah, that's right, high five. <laughs> Boom, all right, here we go. Ow. All right, awesome. Two and a half cups, so. Okay, kids and families, Augustine and I are getting ready to make a snack. We, as Appalachian Americans, can never turn down breakfast food, no matter what time it is. So we've decided to cook some biscuits. In particular, some sweet potato biscuits we've been eyeing in a cookbook recipe. So uh, here we go. What's up? You know, you can put whatever, like, if you want, like, like you could put jam. Yep. Like, if you wanted, like, not like, like inside the mixture, Daddy, but like. When they're done? Yeah, when they're done baking. You can put you, all kinds of things on a biscuit. I'll, uh, I'll cross the line. Oh, Daddy. Right. One. Two. Cross the line. That's good. Now, I find it really interesting that in the Bible, hunger and food and what people crave ends up being a really interesting image to talk about our hearts. If you look at this biblical theme of food, you'll find that it has its start all the way back in the garden. In Genesis 3, Adam and Eve end up eating from the only tree God said not to eat. They showed that they didn't really want to follow God by eating the thing he said not to eat. And this first thing that they did wrong was expressing itself as a poor choice of snack, a bad taste in food. A friend of mine calls the original sin a version of food poisoning. Mix and 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 mix what does this mean? Why is food so important in describing what's in our hearts? So again, it's a picture of what's going on in here that throughout the Bible expresses itself in what we eat. Isn't that fascinating? He wanted to eat with us. Mm-hmm. No, 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 whatever it is. Ta-da! We mix again, we mix again, whoa, 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 this is easy. <laughs> it's really interesting when God rescued his people from slavery in Egypt. Do you remember what they did? They had this feast with bread and a lamb. Do you remember what it was called? Yeah! Get it! All right, uh, we did not rehearse this, so she's doing great. Read about this in Exodus 12, where God tells his people what to eat and an act that remembers that God is rescuing them. What they were eating helped them remember God was with them. And it was a feast that God's people were reminded of his rescue plan. So what they were eating reminded them of God. What they ate in the garden showed that they weren't thinking about God or they were thinking about disobeying God, what they ate also reminded them of God. The blonde dreams, he gets flour and throws it everywhere. The chalk, he uses chalk to dry his hands. You did not blow flour in here. I may have. I out. In 1 Corinthians 11, the church is invited by Jesus to eat a special food, remembering what Jesus did for us. Food helps us train our hearts. So, it's no surprise that when we get to Jesus and he said, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Can you eat righteousness? No. Can you drink it? No. So what's that all about? It's stuff that we want in our hearts. And it's a metaphor. Kids, do you know what a metaphor is? It's a way of picturing what we want in our hearts. I told mom we would save some for her. Sweet potato. Oh, I didn't measure it. 
Let's just say that's a quarter cup. Daddy, sometimes it's okay if you add extra sweet potatoes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Half cup. I'll tell you when. You got it. <laughs> Alright, ready? <laughs> Have you had biscuit dough before? I mean, I had a biscuit that wasn't all the way cooked and it wasn't it wasn't like an uncooked cookie where it's tasty. It's just it's just doughy. Oh my goodness. You need to wash that in the sink. I will. You can't just get it off like that. So when the hunger and thirst for righteousness, what Jesus is talking about is that our hearts want the stuff of God. And it would feel just like, do you smell our biscuits? I'm starting to get a little hungry, are you? It would feel like that for our souls. It would feel like that for our souls. Whatever we want when we think about our favorite snack, right, our favorite food, and we're just getting excited about it. God wants us to feel that way about Him. And indeed, if we're really honest with ourselves, we really, really do hunger and thirst after the character of God. It's what we're designed to do. So don't settle for anything short of that kind of food. So if we think about this image, the image of the snack. I'm pointing through this, by the way, you can't really tell. What? does your heart crave? What, what do you want in your heart? And this image is one way to think about our relationship with God. Just like a few weeks ago, we talked about a deer craving, thirsting for a stream of water. This week, hunger after God with your heart. So picture your favorite snack, picture your favorite meal, waft it, smell it, imagine it, or even better yet, I think we should offer you a challenge. Ready, Lord, challenge? Yeah! I challenge you, parents, and you, your kids, kids, to sometime this week, make some time to make whatever your favorite snack is and think about hungering and thirsting after the very character of God. So let this image, the snack, remind you of your need for something deeper, for something even more delicious, the very presence of God himself. So kids, I can't, I can't help myself. Stay thirsty, my friends. All right, let's try our biscuits. Yay! That's not... Ah! <laughs> Don't do what I did. That is not golden brown, that's yellow. No, just ask mom, ask mom, ask mom. Like that. <laughs> uh, you know, I'm the baker around here. One more second. Ta-da! Ta -da! Yeah. I've gone away to seven years since last I've seen you alone. I hate it pretty good. It's good.